What's up everybody? I hope you're doing real well. I uh, finally settled in after getting back from the States. So that was a very long trip, a very worthwhile trip, and I spent a bit of time at the Boston Amp Show, as I'm sure some of you already know. If you haven't checked out my USA Tour vlog, I will put a link to that in the video description. I was there with Fractal doing a clinic and doing some demos, and the dilemma that I ran into was I couldn't take a guitar with me. Now, I normally play either a PRS SC245 or a PRS Makati Live. They're kind of my main squeezers. I also own a Mira and a Custom 24. They're incredible guitars. As you know, if you've watched the channel, I use them all the time and they very much feel like home for me. So uh, essentially, I know if I've got my PRS and I've got my Axe FX, I can do what I need to do. So I showed up to the amp show with nothing. Obviously, I was doing a fractal clinic. They had a couple of different Axe FXs there that I could plug into, but I needed a guitar. And it turns out PRS had a booth at the amp show, so I was able to get in touch with them. Thank you so much to my buddy Stu Marshall, who's recently become a PRS artist. You should definitely check out his band Night Legion. He's an incredible guitar player, uh, basically a legend of the Australian metal scene. And uh, the people at the Electric Factory for getting me in touch with the PRS people, and they were able to loan me an amazing single cut 594 that I use for my clinic. Uh, but while I was there, I got to check out their booth. So the way the amp show worked, rather than a trade show where it's just, you know, on the floor, heaps of noise from all other directions. These were all in individual hotel rooms, so you could just sort of go in, and it was like being in somebody's living room. It was like if you could come and hang out here and try out all the guitars. So uh, thank you to Beverly at PRS, thank you to Peter at PRS, and thank you to Brian, who is their demo guy, for being so accommodating and so helpful. Uh, this is what I did while I was there. I'm gonna talk about it all a little bit later, but this is all camera audio, but hopefully you get the vibe. There was a whole bunch of stuff that I had never tried before and I had a lot of fun there. So let's go. Exactly, which to me is that's like a compromise. Yeah, it's absolutely. like, well, if I'm playing a plexi, it's 1976, and I need distortion, so well, give me more of this. You know, mm -hmm. just just keep going, and yeah, it's like tone gain. Um, right. Yeah. Which which I'm sure I'm not in the mi minority here. Like everybody probably feels like that. So <laughs> can I try that single cup with the cool <laughs> Thank you. 
it's yeah. If if a guitar can't do ACDC, <laughs> don't bother. few things that I really wanted to try that I got to try there. The first one that a lot of you guys have asked about is the PRS MT15 amp. They had the lunchbox head and the matching cabinet with it. The thing that really surprised me about that amp, I was looking forward to obviously the glorious overdrive sounds out of it, uh, which were definitely glorious. It was a really good sounding tight 
hard rock metal amp, but the clean sounds out of it really, really impressed me. I think if you were looking for a sort of two-channel hard rock metal amp where you can get a really nice, pristine, clean sound, and you've got an over-the-top lead sound, if you had something like, you know, just a tube screamer in front of it, you'd be able to have your clean crunch and lead sound happening really nice. And it was really loud too, even on the uh, low power mode. So uh, my goal is to actually get one of those in the studio. So hopefully uh, somebody I know owns one and I can borrow it or something down here because that would be a cool amp to demo. It only increased my thirst to get that thing in here. The other one was the Archon. I'd seen so many clips on the internet and you know people rave about the Archon and I got to try out their 2550 combo. I was very, very impressed. It was not what I expected. A lot of the demos I've heard uh, kind of has this like 5150 sort of character to it, almost like just, you know, it just sounds like metal basically. Uh, but I found by, hopefully you saw in the clip, by really pumping the mids in there, it's got this interesting character where it doesn't really have the like sizzle that a 5150 has. It's a lot smoother sounding in the room, uh, but it's got this big mid-range, almost like I would imagine um, it's kind of more like Bogner voice. I know somebody like Mark Tremonti is a big fan of using like a rectifier and an Uber shawl, and it, it sort of lent more towards that. It was less 5150 and more Uber, I would say, if that makes any sense. Um, and it didn't really have the sort of harshness that rectifiers often have, that like big flubby low end. It was a little bit more together in the low end and a little bit smoother. So it was, yeah, it was a really good like mid-range heavy amp, which I liked. And um, that sounded really cool with the Mark Holcomb SE, which uh, if you're a periphery guy and you're into that kind of stuff, that guitar is well worth checking out because it played very, very well. Has the coil tap, sounded great. Uh, what else did I try while I was there? Yeah, you saw some clips with the gold top with P90s. Whoa, I think I need a guitar, another guitar with P90s in my life. I've got a, an old Hamer Special, which I should just pull out and restream because uh, I forget how much I enjoy P90s. If you go and listen to a song called, uh, what one is it? Overnight Sensation. It's off the Ragdoll Rewound album. I actually used that Hamer straight into a DSL for all the rhythm tracks, and it's it's got a very cool, chewy character, and that guitar definitely had that. Uh, but the guitar that I ended up using for my clinic, the Single Cut 594, I was really, really stoked to have my hands on. Uh, my Single Cut, I think, is a thoroughly more modern-sounding guitar than the 594. The 594 definitely leans towards having a vintage character but it felt a lot like my single cut, which I like. So it was two of my favorite guitars, the McCarty and the single cut. It felt like it really slammed them together. I also tried the McCarty 594 as well, which was really cool, but I think I liked the single cut a lot better. So uh, yeah, they were awesome. I mean, PRS are always awesome. They're always super consistent. Uh, and that particular guitar felt at home for me. I think if I was ever in a situation like that again, where I couldn't bring my guitar, literally all I need is an Axe FX and just pull one of those off the shelf and I'd be able to do a gig. So uh, it was pretty funny getting to the clinic and you know I hadn't even tuned it, I normally play in drop C and I literally tuned the guitar once, kind of knocked it in and played a few chords, you know, gave it a little tweak again and then did the whole clinic without too much fuss. So yeah, there's my little overview of PRS at the Boston Amp Show. If you've got any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below or if there's any other uh, videos or, you know, any extra footage that you want to see from that show. If I've got it, I would be happy to compile it all together. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you around next time.